Happy Wellness Wednesday. So I am here with my friend, Wynn, Wynn Sisk. Um, today, we're going to talk about reducing toxicity in our um, personal world. And um, Wynn has a really kind of interesting story that I think lots of us can glean amazing information from. So I thought I knew the story and we just talked earlier today and I learned more. So um, welcome, Wynn. Hey, thanks, Laurel. I'm glad to be here. Honored that you're going to let me tell a little bit of my story. Yeah. Yeah. I'm grateful to, to you for being willing to share your story here. Um, so I guess we've known each other. I'm thinking three years about maybe four. I think it's more like four, four and a half. Time flies. Yeah. So, um, we were introduced through a mutual friend and, um, kind of you opened my eyes to the fact that um, our personal care products are, are not well regulated. I already was using environmental working group to look for um, products that were ranked a zero or a one, or at least low on the toxicity when they, they rank it from zero to nine lower numbers are better, but I was spending so much time going through environmental working group, going to the store, trying to figure out what was best for me and my kids. Um, you know, this was before internet when I, well, not before internet, I guess, but when I first learned about the environmental working group, yeah, it was before internet. We were living in Scotland. It was like 2002. And that was when I learned, um, um, from the world wildlife fund, don't use fragrance. Don't buy anything with fragrance. So, wow. so my, um, my thought process was like avoiding fragrance, but there's so much other stuff that I didn't know about. And so, um, when I started digging deeper into that, then you came into my world. So that's kind of how we connected. And, um, so I'm, I'm going to let you share a little bit about your background okay. and then I'll ask you questions. Okay. Before I, before I um, introduce myself or tell you about me, I'm blown away because I always followed as a child-ish, teenager-ish, um, the World Wildlife Federation. I never picked up on that about fragrance. Like, I think that's amazing. I've never heard, I've never heard that before. I think that's huge. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't hear about fragrance until much later, but Wow. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. 2000, 2003, maybe we lived on a college campus at Sterling university in Scotland and they, they had like a big demonstration. They were educating the public. And I was like, really? Like I shouldn't wear perfume. They're like, no, you should not wear perfume and you should look in your products and make sure it doesn't say fragrance or parfum. I was like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that with me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I might love them even more than I ever did now. Yeah. Um, okay, so my name is Wynn Sisk, as Laurel mentioned, and um, I, gosh, I started out with a background in biology, and um, my life experiences kind of led me down a really odd path, I guess you could say. Um, I, I, um, always thought that I would go to uh, medical school. And when I was, I'm a girl, I'm a curly haired girl, right? All, all the curly hair girls always want straight hair. The straight hair girls always, always want curly hair. And when I was um, 25 years, 25, 24, maybe 23 years old, I decided I was going to treat myself to a, um, a straightening treatment. Um, and my hair and I have really long hair and I was actually actually had the nickname happy rain because like I wear it today in a braid I always wore it in a braid then and got the nickname happy rain for some reason but um I got this straightening treatment that was super painful while I was getting it and about six weeks later um around six weeks later four six weeks later all of my hair started breaking off to about a half an inch short. So I went from like waist long hair to, you know, super short hair. 
And I didn't know what I didn't know. You know, it was kind of the beginning of, um, of me kind of questioning things. I just assumed that the product was left on for too long, which it was, but I had no idea how bad the product was for me. Um, I, it, it kind of made me do a U-turn with, um, with my career. And I decided I was going to go to move to Minneapolis to go to the Aveda Institute to get my cosmetology license so that I could figure out how to give people what they wanted and using healthy, organic products in the midst of that. Um, so it was, you know, kind of really traumatic, but that going to the Aveda Institute kind of opened my eyes more to organic food than it did organic products. Cause you just assume that if something is called organic, that it actually is organic. Um, so that's kind of where I started. I opened a salon and, um, do you want me to keep going or are we yeah, keep going? Okay. Okay. So I opened the salon, right. And I was like, in the salon, all we did was talk about our, like a healthy lifestyle. We were using, you know, botanical, safe, organic, natural products. And we were talking about using stainless steel dishes and, you know, no plastic and all, all the healthy things, eating your fruits and vegetables and organic. And, um, and then I found out, you know, when it was time for me to have or to want to have children, I found out that I was going to, I had to go through in vitro. I was not going to be able to have children on my own. So that opened a whole nother world to me of like, okay, why are my hormones completely reversed? Why are my fallopian tubes completely blocked? And I have, there's no reason there was no, there was no infection or anything, you know, they, I, there were no answers. It was that I had to do in vitro. And so that really made me start thinking about hormones, which I knew, I mean, I knew I had estrogen. That's about what I knew. <laughs> That's about what I knew at the time. Um, and, you know, fast forward, I got, I got pregnant with in vitro. I actually have four daughters now. So you can imagine that the hormone issue going through in vitro all the things that we went through to have babies that I was going to make sure that they didn't come in contact with anything that was going to mess with their hormones. Cause I started realizing that the issues there was no genetics behind my hormonal issues. They were all it's environmental. Yeah. Being a mom kind of opens our eyes to right. wow, I want to do everything I can do for these little beings. But that was, that was a turning point for me too. I remember when my now 22 year old was six months or 10 months old, and I was cleaning the bathtub with Lysol before he got in there. And I was like, Oh my God, it hurts me. It's hurting me. My throat hurts. My nose hurts. This can't be good for his little lungs. I need to like rethink what I should be cleaning the bathtub with. Right. You know, that now it's baking soda, but yeah. and that doesn't hurt yeah, you, all hurt you. <laughs> or him or the environment or the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it was Mother. like, I guess for me, like I probably would have been in the mindset, oh, this stuff is like <clears throat> hurting my throat. <clears throat> it must really be working. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> this stuff is good, you know? I mean, I look back now and it's just like, oh my gosh, how did you not, there were just all these little signs everywhere. But like you said, you, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So we right. beat ourselves up about it, but right. You better do better. So, yeah. go, so keep going with your story. Okay. So here we are, like, I have these four babies. I'm cluing in to like, I'm, I'm cluing in to um, things in our environment that are, you know, some things are better than others. Right. So I started switching over. Um, I was already in my mind using the safe body products and makeup and skincare because it was marketed as organic 
Botanical National. Say that was the only brand that ever came through the doors of my salon. I mean, you can imagine the reps that we had coming in wanting to introduce new products to us. What I think about now is that there were people that were coming in offering me better products than what I had. And I was not interested because I was just so in tune with what, what the marketing was on the bottles of what I had. Um, so I, you know, we're starting to eat organic and I'm buying like natural cleaning products, but still not understanding that natural means nothing because it's not regulated. And, um, I'm good. Like we're trucking along. We know, we know stuff. <laughs> and one day I was like, you know, here I've had these four babies and I don't, you know, I, I'm going to do something for myself. I've been working so hard and um, my body has been used and abused and um, I'm going to treat myself. And I think about this now and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to treat myself to implants. I'm going to get breast implants. But I was like, ah, I don't know though. It's like, they're not, they're not there naturally. Like this is kind of going against all the things that I'm kind of the way that I'm kind of living, but I went and I asked the doctors, what are they made of? Silicone. Okay. Well, I was like, silicone safe for cooking. And, you know, there's all these people, they've been putting them in breasts forever. And they're not the ones that were recalled years ago that were leaking. These are the new ones. These right. are the new ones, the better ones. And um, I even had family members that were doctors, family members that had implants. So of course I asked them, they're like, oh my gosh, they're so fine. And actually, as a matter of fact, the doctor that uh, um, the family members, like the doctor that did my wife, my daughters, my daughter-in-laws goes to the end. He's the best. So I did. And um, I got my implants and they were weird. They weren't right. <laughs> and so I went back to the doctor and they were like, oh, you know what? You have capsular contracture, which I was like, they were like totally normal happens all the time. Well, what I didn't know is the reason why it happens is because somebody's body is rejecting it. Your body's going, what is this foreign thing? Let's squish it up and mm -hmm. twist it up and make it look really funny. Right make it look really hard because all the scar tissue and stuff's coming around it, right? Yeah. They were like, let's just take it out, redo it. So this is literally like two months after I had the first ones in, they redo them. Wow. And about a month after that, everything went crazy. But I had no idea that it was a result of the implants. Right, you didn't draw the connection yet. No. No. And I still only knew little bits and pieces about food. And, you know, like I, I thought we were making, we were kind of making better choices, but I, this was what actually opened up a can of worms, you know, and a rabbit hole that I'm still traveling down today. And I have to say, I mean, all the things that happen, which I'm sure you're going to ask me, all the things that happen, like, I'm thankful for them now because I would not know what I know now had I not gone through it. I, my goal is that everybody knows what I know so that they don't either have to go down the same route or that I can be a voice for them and share what my experience so that they can help find answers. Right. Right. So I'm on the same page. My experience was different. I got an MS diagnosis in 2006 and now I'm like screaming from the rooftops, like all the right. contribute to autoimmune disease. And, um, you know, my focus now is on dementia prevention because I lost my mom at 77 to, to dementia. And there's all these things that we can do to prevent MS, to prevent autoimmune issues, to prevent dementia. So toxicity. Right reducing toxicity in our world and improving our body's ability to um, biotransform or detoxify um, is one of those big pillars to protect our body. So 
Yeah. And I think, I mean, I literally think, I don't think that it was just because of the implants that all this thing happened. I think my cup, my cup was filling up. Yeah. It filled up and then it was just the icing on the top or the cherry on top that just made everything the just broke the camel's back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it did. Yeah, it did. So what were your symptoms? What, what happened? It's, it's funny. It was, it was, it was not funny, but it's wild thinking back now, because the first thing that happened was, um, my, my wrist and my, my back and my ankle started hurting so badly. I mean, I was just like, I was in constant pain. And I just remember like, I didn't, nothing had happened. I hadn't been injured. I've always been super active. I mean, I was chasing around four kids, five and under. Right. And, um, and so I went to, I finally went to a chiropractor. I'd never been to a chiropractor before. And I had a lot of clients that went to this chiropractor and, um, I was like, oh my this hurts. I don't know what it is in my back. And so she takes an x-ray and she's like, did you know that you have a, you have like a something on your thyroid? Like I can see it on x-ray. And, um, if you were my friend or my mom and, and obviously you're my patient, you, you need to go get this checked out. And so I was like, so the whole reason why I went there, we didn't even really address. Cause she was like, you need to go wow. to, uh, I, I think I went to a general practitioner first. I see him. He's like, you need to go to an endocrinologist. Go to the endocrinologist. Biopsy, ultrasound, all this sort of stuff. They're like, we got to get this out. We think you have thyroid cancer. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no, nothing was wrong. No, none of my thyroid functions were off. Everything was totally fine. And um. And so I was petrified. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got, you know, they didn't know which type, but they didn't like it. They were like, this is weird. We just need to get this out. So I had my thyroid removed. I think I got the implants and uh, the original ones, I think were in January. I had them redone in March, I had surgery in June. For your thyroid. Mm -hmm. So they took out half of my thyroid and 13 lymph nodes because the lymph nodes were hypervascular. Wow. So when you, if anybody, any of you have ever had any issues with your thyroid, uh, there are all kinds of issues. Um, I mean, it's, and I never had had, had any challenges before, but then all of a sudden, you know, they, we can't regulate my thyroid. We're like, I mean, up and down and up and down. I can't sleep, can't keep my eyes um, open, my hair is falling out, my face is going crazy, my weight's all over the place. I mean, I'm anxious. I just like all of these things start going on and they're like, it's your thyroid. But every couple of months we were doing, I don't know, it was like six weeks we were doing my lab work and my lab work made no sense. I mean, it was just, it was a roller coaster. So you know, we're just attributing everything to my thyroid. Well, all of a sudden I can't remember anything. And my grandmother had Alzheimer's at a very young age. And so all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, I'm 40, 39, 40 years old. I like, I don't, I, I was petrified. I would be talking and totally forget what I was talking about. I couldn't remember something from the day before. I forgot what we did for my daughter's first birthday. I mean, just Yes. It, was, it was scary. And, you know, we just, and then I started getting anxious. Yeah. I started, um, I started having these issues with my bladder. Like anytime I would go to bed at night, um, I, I had to go to the bathroom all the time. Like I, I had this constant urge, like a urinary tract infection. So all the doctors are like, you have a urinary tract infection. I'm like, no, I don't. I've had one before. This is, and they would test me. You don't have a urinary tract infection. We don't know what's going on. Meanwhile, that pain was everywhere, mm. everywhere. I'm going to the neurologist. I went to the urologist. I go to the gynecologist. I go to the orthopedist. Like nobody can help me. Nobody. They're like, nothing's wrong. Yeah. There's nothing there. I start itching all over. I'm like itching. Like, what is wrong? Like, why am I? And mostly the itching was at night when I was lying down. It just, 
you know. So then, you know, the doctors are thinking like, oh my gosh, this girl is, she's cuckoo, you know? It's not like I was milking my insurance. I was self-employed. I'm paying for all of these doctor's appointments out of pocket. <sighs> and um, I go in for, I go to a functional medicine doctor. I find functional medicine, right? And I go into this functional medicine doctor and they do all these tests and they're asking me all my history, which I was like, wow, this is fascinating, you know? Um, and they, I get a thermogram and they see this place on my breast and they're like, we think you have ductal carcinoma. And I'm like, Oh my God, I think I have, I have, I have, have one more thing. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. I didn't, I didn't, but it scared me. And then about a month later, no, it was a follow-up visit. Cause we were, I thought we were talking about my thyroid. And the doctor said that same doctor, she said, she's looking at my blood work and I see her like looking at the paper and then she's like, whoosh, whoosh, like making all these notes and circling. And she was like, this is not good. I thought she was going to tell me I was diabetic. I don't know why I thought she was going to tell me I was diabetic. And she said, this is not good. She said, your CA-125 is elevated. And I was like, what is a CA-125? She said, that's uh, a tumor marker for ovarian cancer. My aunt had just been in Johns Hopkins for two years, wide open. She'd gone in for an elective hysterectomy and they'd found it everywhere when they went in. She was literally in the hospital for two years with cadaver skin closing her up because they ha kept having to go back in and go back in. So I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So I'll leave out all those gory details, but after many exams the next day, um, multiple hospitals, multiple doctors, uh, they redrew my CA-125. Everything was, CA-125 had come down. They told me if your CA-125 is still ele elevated, you've got ovarian cancer. It come down. It doesn't do that. Yeah. You're, you're, it's only elevated when you have cancer. So every six months after that, I had to get my CA-125 drawn to see if I had ovarian cancer. Meanwhile, that pain and that whole memory and the itching and the, the bladder stuff is still happening. Oh my gosh, so stressful <laughs> too. It's so stressful. I, I mean, I couldn't hold my, my youngest. I mean, I think she was around two because I stopped, I got my implants right after I stopped breastfeeding her. I can hold her. I can hold her hand because it just hurts so much on my back, like any, the slightest bit of weight. Um, and so one day, um, my husband, we were sitting down. I mean, I was literally like, I would be so exhausted. I just lie on the floor, on the hardwood floor and just be asleep, you know, cause I was trying to like stretch out my back because it hurt so bad. We were sitting down and he was like, we were like listing out the timeline of all the doctor's appointment and probably all guessing about how much money we'd spent and how I'd gotten no answers. And it was just such a mystery. And he finally said, he was like, when did you get your implants? And I was like, oh my gosh, light bulb. Yes. Oh my gosh. So still, so then my Google search changed Instead of what are breast implants made of, it was what harmful ingredients are in breast implants. And the whole search changed. Mm -hmm. Like all the things, before it was just silicone, silicone shell, silicone. You switch up your words on your Google search. It was like, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And there was a surgeon that had written about she was, I think she was in the Air Force or Army. She'd become a plastic surgeon and she had performed, started putting implants and doing plastic surgeries to people in the military. And she started noticing that all of these women were having the same symptoms. And she had, I think she, she had had breast implants and a couple other things and she started having the same symptoms. So she was like one of the first doctors that actually recognized that there was breast implant illness and that there was a very specific way that you had to get them out of someone's body because they form a, um they form a capsule around the implants which holds all the neurotoxins and heavy metals and all of those things you don't want in your body so you have to take the whole thing out intact it's almost like a, 
a shell over the implant. And um, so I started finding out lots of answers, but then I had to find somebody that would actually do it for me. And that was, it took about a year and a half to find a surgeon. Wow. So then you went down that road, you got them removed. Yes. What happened with your health? It was like, um, I mean, the, the damage, there was, there was damage done, obviously. Um, you know, my, my, um, I, I, it, I, I woke up, first of all, I was alive because the last thing I told the surgeon before he did the surgery was please promise me that I'm going to wake up because I was that bad. You know, I was like, just please promise me four babies. And, um, I woke up Yeah. and, um, and I felt, you know, obviously beat up from the surgery because there was a lot of scar tissue, um, in my chest, but it was like all the things started coming back to me. Like, I felt like my memory was better. My back wasn't hurting as bad. It wasn't this constant, just excruciating pain. Like just things started getting better. My headaches were going away. Um, I mean, I was, I was free. The anxiety was, was going away. The bladder stuff was instantly gone. My skin itching gone. Um, it was like, I was no longer a prisoner to myself, to my choice, (laughs) you know, that's crazy. Um, so your body was reacting to these toxins and, and thanks husband for figuring that out. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I know it's so crazy. And while I was searching, like the, um, trying to figure out the thyroid issues, this is before I had the, um, before I had my implants out, I had, I, I left out one really important thing here, which is what clued me into our personal care products. Um, I found Dr. Terry Walls, you know, Dr. Terry Walls, right? Um, somewhere in one of her blogs, she said something about triclosan and um, sodium lauryl sulfate. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what, what is that? Right. <laughs> and triclosan was the antibacterial agent that was in the hand sanitizer that I was using on my kids. Yeah. I mean, and, we were, it was encouraged to use antibacterial soap to kill the bacteria. So. Yeah. And it's a hormone disruptor and it messes with your thyroid and it's in your toothpaste. And, and so that is what actually, what got me looking at what, you know, I was putting on my body instead of just trusting the label that it was natural, botanical, organic, whatever. I was blown away when I realized that the stuff that I'd spent hours and extra money on, like researching that it had known carcinogens and hormone disruptors and all of that sort of stuff in it. Right. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, I'm looking down my list of things that I wanted to ask you, but you did a really good job of kind of giving us a, a personal picture. A, 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 you're putting a personal story to a big picture that um, there's toxins out there and, and sometimes we really just don't know what they are. Um, we live in a you know toxic world and there's lots of things that we can't control, but there's lots of things that we can. Yeah. Like what we bring into our house, what we clean our bathtub with, what we brush our teeth with, what we, you know, the lotion we put on our face. Um, and you mentioned that the, the marketing terms are not something that we can trust because they're not regulated. They're, they're marketing terms. Right. (laughs) Um, so natural and organic. And, um, what does that mean actually? Um, so um, I'm trying to figure out what, what direction to go in at, at this moment. So what then after your triclosan and sodium lauryl sulfates, um, then where did you, where did you go from there? How did you continue that journey to yeah. personal care products? And well, this is around the time I've been on Facebook for a little while. Um, just posting stuff about my kids. But when I was going through my whole journey of 
figuring out these little things that I was like, this is baloney. Like this is baloney. And the easiest way for me to get the information out to people about what I was learning, just scratching the surface about the triclosan or the sodium lauryl sulfate or even foods that affected your thyroid or whatever, I would post it on um, Facebook. And, um, you know, nothing fancy, like what, how, how could this be? Like we used this, this is messing with my kids' hormones and um, linked to cancer and all this kind of stuff. And a friend of mine uh, that I had not seen since the seventh grade, we'd connected on Facebook. I was um, living in South Carolina. I think she was in Georgia at the time. And she sent me a message and she was like, gosh, when I keep seeing all your posts about, you know, um, clean living and you really are living the mission of beauty counter. She said to me, and I was like, what is she talking about? Like, I don't know this girl and what is beauty counter and what is the mission of beauty counter? Like, I was like, what, what is she talking about? And I was curious enough to look up the company and, I was watching a video of the CEO, her name is Greg Renfrew, and there were a couple of things that she said that just really ticked me off, not at her, but ticked me off at the, at the industry. And one of them was that um, out of all the chemicals that have introdu been introduced into commerce since World War II, which I think were like 85,000, which I was like, wow, really? <laughs> whoa, like what kind of chemicals, what are the, you know, what, um, that only a handful of them had any safety data on them, which meant, and I didn't fully understand this at the time, which meant that they were basically being put on the market without any testing. So there was really no need for guinea pigs or cause we were, are basically the guinea pigs. And that, um, like the European Union bans a gob, you know, gobs of um, harmful ingredients. Known, these are known harmful ingredients. I think it was twelve hundred something like that. Is that right? Twelve hundred, right? Fifteen hundred, thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred, thirteen hundred. Yes, something. I yeah. mean, something over a thousand. And the United States at the time only banned eleven, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, eleven. And I was like, <laughs> what? Right what? And then I was like, well, what are these? What are these chemicals that they, well, I didn't care about the chemicals that they did ban because it didn't matter. Right. But I was like, what's the difference in us versus them? Yeah. And then I, and then I had a little list, like, this is all just from her saying this to me. And I started, cause you know, I'm, I'm researching everything and I don't believe anything anybody tells me until I read it for myself. You know, that was kind of my mentality because all the doctors told me all these things were safe. Right. right? I'm like, uh-uh. So I just keep researching and then I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. So there's these handful of ingredients that I have right here that say they should never be in our products. They're parabens and, you know, triclosan and formaldehyde and all these things, sodium lauryl sulfate and polyethylene glycol, all these words that were totally foreign to me. So I took this little card and I went to my products first because I knew, like I knew, I was like, my products are going to be fine. They're <laughs> botanical, they're natural, they're right. organic, they're safe. It says it right there on the bottle. And I took every single one of my products. I don't even think, I don't think I looked at my makeup right away because a lot of them don't have the labels on them. Shampoo, conditioner, body wash, all that stuff, deodorant. Every single one of them had the no, no ingredients in them. And I was like, oh, you know, I didn't want to believe it, but I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. And I was, I get mad, right? I was mad. So then I went to my kids' products and I'd chosen them wisely. Body wash. I mean, you don't think about how many products your kids use, right? My kids at the time, like I said, were five and five and five and four and two. Is that right? Yeah. They use lotion. They use body wash. We use shampoo. We can conditioner and we use toothpaste. 
and probably some butt paste, you know, for, or diaper, <laughs> whatever you call it. We call it butt paste. Um, every one of them worse than mine. And I thought they were better than mine, worse than mine. And then I was like, and How? there's an assumption that our skin is like this impermeable, impermeable barrier that protects us. Yes. But then we learn, oh, no, you know, you know, the drug patches that they put on yes. you to like go through your skin to your bloodstream to deliver medication. Well, all the stuff you put on your skin actually also goes into your bloodstream. I am so glad you said that because as a biology major, I don't know why. I thought that my skin was like the Ziploc bag that held all the juice in it. Right. Seriously. And so when I, when I started thinking about that, I was like, oh, well, your body absorbs this stuff. Like there's all these studies out there about what you put on is absorbed into your bloodstream, this, that, and the other. But when you think about it, I mean, I can put a patch on my skin to stop smoking cigarettes Guess what else I can do with a patch on my skin? I can prevent conception of a baby. Right. <laughs> I did not put two and two together with that. Right. Just a little tiny spot right there. Not all over my body. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, so that at that moment, I was like, that's what made me really start researching beauty counter, which really researching beauty counter means researching the lack of regulation and researching the solution, right? It was a humongous learning experience for me. And at that point, that's why I was like, I, you know, this is ridiculous for me to have this information, for me to have to somebody introduce this to me, for me to have this information and not go share and tell people what I know I care about people right? I don't want anybody to go through anything that they don't have to, right? Yeah. So. And for me, when we lived in Scotland, Scotland was, was part of the EU at that time. And so we could go to Boots, which is like CVS and buy pretty much anything off the shelf. And it was pretty much safe. <laughs> then we came and we learned about organic food while we were over there. So while we were over there, we learned about the Dirty Dozen and I would mostly shop organic food. When we came back here, I'm like, ah! when we first came back, it was really hard to find organic food about, yeah. about nine months after we moved back, it suddenly appeared in our local grocery store. Um, but I was like, well, where am I going to get my, my products like to wash the kids hair and to, right. you know, put sunscreen well, on. And that's one thing that I found too, which is really interesting and also really confusing and gives people a false sense of security is that you have brand A in the United States or in the European Union brand A, right? That's from, from the European Union, Germany or, or not Germany, wherever yeah. over, over there, right? You think because it's made over there that when you buy that same brand over here in the United States, that it's the same clean formula. There's and that is not the case. No, when, when we sell Coca-Cola to Japan, we don't put high fructose corn syrup in it. Right. They won't accept it. Right. <laughs> but we give our American friends high fructose right. corn syrup. So right. it depends on where you sell it as to what ingredients you put in the product. Right. They're like, well, I use this French brand, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but unless you actually fly over there, <laughs> and purchase it, are you getting yeah. the safer, you know, formulation? Right. Because sometimes it's more expensive to make it safer. So if well, they it's definitely more expensive to fly over there too. Yeah, that, that's more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have to, we don't, people are like, well, how can they do it? Well, because you know, the, the honest truth is that the FDA doesn't have any jurisdiction over the personal care industry. They leave it up to the the companies that formulate and if they don't have to, why are they going to do it? They're going to use the cheap, inexpensive stuff. And they're going to keep doing it until they have to change. Right. You know, they're making tons of money the way it is. Why would they change? Now there are companies that are doing the right thing now, you know, thank goodness for companies like beauty counter that are leading the way that are other people are like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And more consumers are paying attention now Right, right. see it in the news the market and saying, "I want safe stuff." More companies, yeah. hearing. So they're kind of having they're kind of having a change. Although 
And there are a good many of those companies that'll say, oh, we don't use this, we don't use this, and we don't use this. But if you flip over on the ingredients bottles, you do use this, and you do use this, and you do use this, and those are all no-no's. So, but, you know, progress, right? right? Progress. Yes, I, I still use the Environmental Working Group and, and Skin Deep and look stuff up on there. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a great tool because it's really, you know, for uh, people that are listening, they're probably like, oh gosh, shoot, you know, what are we going to do? And, you know, it's not, when you have people that are resources, like, like Laurel and like myself, like we really love what we do. You know, I don't have to just talk to you about beauty counter. I'm going to talk to you about laundry detergent. I'm going to talk to you about toothpaste. I'm going to talk to you about your dish detergent and your candles and all of those things. Like it's just a, it's a simple ask. So it's not that, you know, I don't know about you, Laurel, but, but Laurel, but I dug my own rabbit hole finding the answers and it took a long time and it was exhausting. Yeah. And I don't, people don't have to do that now. There are so many good resources out there. So it doesn't have to be scary. It can be right. frustrating, you know, cause you really do find out a lot about companies when you start reading the labels, but I don't know, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Yeah. And I, I feel like, um, it sounds like you, and I put myself in this category that we're kind of canaries in the coal mine. Um, my, my husband tells me, babe, you're, you're a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a Bugatti. You're not a Ford truck. Like you, you have to have all of the exact things. You have to have the right mechanic and the right kind of tune up and the right kind of oil. Um, and that I, makes me like, look at it in a nice way. Like, okay, I'm, I'm a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, that's a lot nicer way than I think of it. Um, I got to take good care of myself, but because, you know, we've been through this and our, our bodies, um, maybe, you know, you used the analogy before about the bucket. Um, you know, I've heard people say this, this was a common analogy years ago. I haven't heard it recently, but everybody has a different size bucket, you know, a different size rain barrel yeah. from a genetic perspective and from a toxicity standpoint, um, we can only handle so many drops in the bucket and, you know, what we were exposed to glyphosate from, um, our neighbors spraying it in their yard or we're getting it on our food. Um, we're exposed to mercury coming out of our fillings. You know, all of these are drops in the bucket, but we might not show symptoms until the bucket is totally full and overflowing. So if you're a, if you're a Ferrari, your bucket might only be a gallon. If you're a, a Ford pickup, you, you might have a 10 gallon bucket. But so watch, listen, listen and learn from the people who, who are the, the Ferraris and the Bugattis in the group. Yeah. And so that you don't have to suffer, you know, with toxins. <laughs> right. And what, you know, the, 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 I think the biggest thing that I would tell people too, is that you don't know how big your bucket is. You don't know how full it is. You don't know how close it is to overfilling, but you know that moment when you start feeling like not yourself and you feel bad and stuff starts falling apart or going haywire, all you can do is look back and say, back then, before X, Y, Z happened, before this happened, I don't, you know, we don't have to, if we take, you know, little tiny baby steps, just little changes can can have a big impact. And I just kept thinking like when, when everything started going south with me, all I, I was like, gosh, back before, you know, my back started hurting and I, my memory and this, it was, it was all like, all I could think of me was in the past because this me that I was, this body that I was living in was not mine. I was like, where did, where did I go? Like what happened? Yeah. Um, so now I'm like, I'm going to do whatever, whatever I need to do within reason to keep me and my family safe, yeah. you know? So since you have been down this road and this journey, you've learned a lot. So your yeah. focus is kind of on education and advocacy um, now to help others kind of spread the word. Yeah. Um, so if you were going to list, like, I don't know, your top five things to 
to stay healthy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, our focus is on detoxification and reducing toxins. I know you moved into your new house. You have a, a special thing that you use regularly for detoxification. So, um, yeah. I mean, you can share. Yeah. Okay. Share about, spell, share about this special thing as I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. The special thing. Um, I, I got a, um, uh, infrared sauna and, um, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, I, you know, I probably have not spent as much time in it in the summertime as I should have just because, you know, kids and life and stuff like that. But the time that I spend in it, you know, it really, it's pretty crazy what a sauna um, can do for you. Detoxification, it can help with stress and fatigue, muscle issues. You actually burn calories, which when you're sitting in it, which is pretty awesome. Um, it can help with your immune system because it can actually um, kind of almost mimic a fever in your body because it, it, it heats up your core temperature. Mm -hmm. It helps with increased blood flow, helps with skin conditions. I mean, there's all kinds of things that it does, but I think for me, my biggest reason for using it is I still do have um, some back pain, not like I did. And I know I still have junk in my body from those implants probably because toxins don't just come out of you, you know? Um, I use it for detoxification purposes. So just like you said, like we come in contact with so many different things in the environment that we don't have control over and, um, sending the sauna can be so relaxing, but it's so beneficial. So, um, I mean, I, it was just kind of a, it was a gift to myself, you know, so I didn't have to go and sit in somebody else's sauna and sit on somebody else's sweat. <laughs> <laughs> that was a better gift than a, than implants, than oh. <laughs> live and learn. Right. So yeah. You mentioned one thing, so I'm just going to go over real quick, um, ways that our body can detoxify. So with some of my clients, we will do a DNA test. Not everybody wants to know, but some people want to know what, what is my, um, from a genetic standpoint, how big is my bucket? What is my ability to detoxify? So our liver, there's a, a phase one and a phase two. And on the, the DNA test, you can see um, how fast you detoxify. And it can be a problem if you detoxify your, your phase one too fast, or if you detoxify your phase two too slow, um, because you, in that process, you go from slightly toxic to more toxic in, as your body is attempting to get rid of it. So if your phase one is too fast, it's like water coming into the kitchen sink too fast. And there's like, it, it can't handle it, you know, a downpour when, when we have flooding because the, the drains can't take the water down fast enough. The, if phase two is slow, it's like your drain is clogged and it can't let it down pipes fast enough. So from a um, genetic standpoint, we can learn that um, my phase one is too fast. My phase two is okay. There's things that I can do to help, um, help your body to support your body. So I recommend broccoli sprouts to everyone, <laughs> cruciferous vegetables. So your broccoli and cauliflower and your Brussels sprouts and cabbage, um, that helps to in, allow your body to speed up its, its own biotransformation, its own detoxification. So that's one thing that's what you already mentioned was sweating. So whether you're sweating through exercise or you're sweating in a hot shower or you're sweating in an infrared sauna, releasing sweat is a way of detoxifying. Um, we have to pee and we have to poop. And so drinking lots of water. So, yeah. um, you know, there's a little bit of controversy generally um, half of your body weight in ounces. So if you're 200 pounds, drink hundred ounces of water a day. Um, and, um, what else? Oh, pooping. So let me go back to pooping. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's talk about it. And let's talk about it. If, um, if it's not coming out regularly, like a full, like you know, at least a banana size 
the consistency of a banana every day. Sorry to go there, but um, your body is holding on to stuff for too long. So you got to go every day. So if that's not happening, that needs to be addressed. Um, so that we're talking about, you know, kind of natural ways to encourage detoxification in the body, exercise, sweating, peeing and pooping. Mm -hmm. um, and as much as we can, we minimize the toxins that are coming in. Right. So you mentioned, um, mentioned a few things already. You, you said you talk to people about using stainless steel and glass over plastic. Yep. Every day, yep. my water bottle. I don't care if it breaks. I got a vacuum cleaner. I've got a broom. Yep. It's fine. That and stainless steel. We don't, no water in plastic bottles. We do not buy um, water in plastic bottles. My water, if I go on a trip, guess what? I'm going to fill up a bunch of these unless I'm obviously flying, which I haven't. I don't like flying anyway. So I'm fine with that. I don't need to bring my water because I don't fly. But, um, you know, reducing as much plastic as you can, you know, in the food that you eat. So, and sometimes that's hard, like for people who drink milk, I mean, milk typically comes in plastic and yogurt typically comes in plastic, but making sure that it's BPA free, that doesn't mean that it doesn't necessarily have BPF and BPS, but you've made a better choice. Um, um, you know, cleaning, like cleaning, you do not have to buy these expensive cleaning products, right? You can clean with vinegar, alcohol, water, peroxide, douse some little essential oils on there and they can smell really beautiful. Baking soda, Super cheap. lemon, like we had yeah. a stain on our, on our counter. I just cut a lemon in half with some baking soda, scrub that off. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, we, we do eat as much organic as we can. I mean, I will tell you that besides my house payment, uh, our biggest expense each month is our food. And, you know, and I hate spending that money at the grocery store, but I also am like, you know what, if that's what it is and that's what it is, because I have peace of mind knowing that my kids and my husband and I are eating healthy, nutrient dense food. So, I mean, it, it's, it stinks that it costs that much, but if you can have a garden, have a garden, like they're super fun. Garden, if you right? have a, a connect with the CSA. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then you can pick stuff in a canvas bag and not have to wrap it in plastic because. Right. Take yeah. your own bags to the grocery store. <laughs> Keep them in the back of your car. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, simple stuff. Like we have a, we did, it was a splurge when we moved into this house, but I was like, I want a water filter for my house. Like I just want to know, I could smell when we moved in this new house, like it was like bleach coming out of the faucet. And I have a Berkey water filter, like you can get the um, Berkey water filters. Those are great. But um, we finally did put in a, we did a whole house and then we did reverse osmosis at the sink. And so now I can like, I used to, was telling my kids, I'm like, hurry up in the shower. Hurry up, you know, it's, it, it was literally if my, if my, the water was hot then it smelled even stronger. You walk into the house, it smelled like bleach. I mean, and it's, it's chloramine. It was a mixture. I did on the EWG in case you don't know this. Um, I know you do Laurel, but you can search your, um, there's a water, a tap water database and you can search by your zip code. Right. And you need to know what's in your water. So you know, what water filter will filter your gunk out, right? You don't just want a Brita or whatever, like water filters are specific to certain, you know, you need one specific to what is in your water. And so I found out that we have really high levels of chloramine, which is, get this, basically chlorine and, or bleach and ammonia. I don't know about you, but I learned when I was like five years old that you don't mix those two <laughs> things together, right? Oh my gosh. And no, I didn't know that you could put your zip code in at EWG and find your own water. You can. Wow. It's, it's pretty, pretty wild. Pretty wild. Right. So if anybody's on city water, they can look that up if they're on municipal water. Yes. 
Yeah. And I mean, you know what? A lot of people have the misconception that if they're in a well, they have this beautifully clean water that comes straight out of the ground. Got I don't be. believe that. Yeah. The water, I mean, we lived at the top of a mountain in Virginia. We were at the top of the water supply and we had our water tested and we had, oh my gosh, what was it? It was an environmental, oh gosh, I can't even remember what, some crazy weird chemical in our water that came from our well at the top of the you know, the, wow. we were at the top of the chain basically. And it's cause it, it all circulates in the atmosphere. Right. I forget what it was, but it was crazy. It was weird. We were like, wait, what? Um, so yeah, water filters are good. You don't have to spend a fortune on them just, and you don't have to do your whole house filter your, if you have to filter something, just filter what you drink. Yeah. We just did an air filter. We did air filters this year. Oh. I mean, it, COVID was a good time to do it. So yeah. Yeah. We got an air doctor in the, I have an air doctor. Yeah. Very happy with that one. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah. My dad said for the first time, um, he said, I, I realized that that thing was really working when the sun was coming in and I couldn't see dust particles floating around. Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then my son said, he said, mom, last night after you tucked me in, cause he sleeps with the dog. He said, Rocco farted. And then the air filter turned to red <laughs> and kicked into high. <laughs> so, listen, that's so funny because that's really funny. You must have a big dog. Um, no, he's not. He's like 35 pounds, but he's got a nasty fart. Yeah, that's hilarious. There was something um, I can't. Oh, when we would cook um, in our old kitchen. Yeah. It would cut on, it would be in two rooms over. And all of a sudden I'm like, why is that on? And I'm like, you go back into the kitchen, you can smell it, you know? And I'm like, all that junk I know. in the air, you know? I do, I love that air doctor. I used to think that um, if I built my dream house that I would have a gas stove, but now they're saying that that's not good. It really yeah. Yeah. So every time we cook, the air doctor pretty much turns to orange or red. It's like, yeah. Trying to clean the air. And it's two rooms away, too. Yeah. They, I think they filter like 1,500 square feet. Like one of those machines will, or will clean, scrub the air, something like that, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so if, you've listed a whole bunch of good stuff that anybody listening can take away. I mean, I, I know we've been on a, a similar journey and that we didn't do all this in one day. No, this, no. this is a time consuming process and everybody has to go at their own pace. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, of- these water bottles, like you can get them for $2 at Ikea or, mm-hmm. uh, what do you call it? Um, TJ Maxx, right. Most people probably have, I didn't, we didn't even think about pots and pans, cast iron. Yeah. I use cast iron or stainless steel for that. Like you can typically get that. Um, you can get that stuff like at a goodwill. Sometimes I would make sure though, that you're actually buying stainless steel and not aluminum. Cause a lot of times, um, that can be confusing, but, um, I mean, my mom has a lot of, you know, older glass, you know, not older, but the, you know, the, she's like 20 casserole glass Pyrex dishes. I'm like, have a couple of those, you know? (laughs) Um, and she, you know, for my mom, who's, you know, she's one of those people, she can't really teach an old dog new tricks. She's seen what has gone on with me and she has started to pay attention, which is awesome. Yep. You know, um, cause they've seen that they've seen the change, you know, and then, and then more, you just hear so much in the news about paying attention to, especially now with everything that's going on with COVID, like just be healthy, take good care of yourself, take your vitamin D, take your zinc, you know, take your C, just get outside in the sun and just, you know, sit out there for 30 minutes without sunscreen on, um, cook healthy foods. Your body needs it in order to run like the machine it was made to be. Right. So well, you have been um, a wealth of information. I love talking to you. And I learned, I learned lots of things from you tonight. So awesome. Um, same. Teach the other people listening. You, you yeah, know. more coming too, because I'm actually, um, I'm actually working on my functional medicine um, health 
coach board certification. Oh, so yeah. there's, oh, yeah. Ooh, good for you. Yeah. I'm really, it's been really awesome. Um, so I've got a lot more, I just, every week it's just like, Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. So I'm really excited. Cool. We'll have to talk again. Very yeah. Soon. <laughs> when thank you so much it's been a true pleasure talking with thanks. you thanks thank you so much I, I loved every minute of it go get to those um girlies that it's time to be tucked in soon that's right they'll stay up as long as i as long as i'm busy <laughs> we didn't know. me too i'm like you have a clock there that's right oh i, I didn't know yeah <laughs> all right when we'll take good care we'll talk soon Thanks, Laurel. Happy Wellness Wednesday.